for the ball originals today we are kicking off the second episode of the interview with a rising baller from england he is being considered as someone who will represent england very very soon someone who might actually wear the number 10 jersey for england someone where where people are whispering already that he is a magician someone who has scored some fantastic goals in under 18 uh, for chelsea we have today joe haig with us welcome to the interview joe thank you very much thank you where do you see yourself because while you play on the wings as well uh, you are also uh, seen as an attacking midfielder right so which is your best position what do you like the most uh, my favorite position is the attacking midfield, like number 10 sort of sort of role but I, I, I like playing anywhere and as long as I'm on the pitch really I don't really mind but definitely in the number 10 spot that's where I feel like I, I play the best and I can be most effective in, in, in that position. Well, I will take that number 10 and I will ask you, uh, who do you model yourself on? Uh, um, well, obviously, Lionel Messi, he's, I'm pretty sure everyone, but I like, I kind of like, want to base myself on Messi but like on a Chelsea sort of perspective probably like a bit of Mesa Mount and Pulisic like a combined bit of them two um, as I just I love like running with the ball beating players and creating goals and assists and then also I'm a bit like uh, well not I try and base my game about um, how Iniesta used to play like um, very like uh, team based and um, yeah, keeping the ball and just just trying to get on the ball as much as possible and just yeah, cause, cause the defense problems. I mean, while why you were growing up, Joe, you of course idealized Steven Gerrard, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, is 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 that kind of an inspiration still? Yeah, de definitely, because uh, just seeing him, his leadership and his uh, winning mentality, I think, because um, I. Uh, I, I, I have that. I want to win at all costs. Um, and I think that's really important that I've um, brought that throughout my career so far, just that winning, man, winning mentality and, and uh, lo yeah, losing just, just hurts me. So um, definitely um, still continues to this day. So which team did you support as a kid? Like they're saying, we seeing Jaden Sancho supporting Chelsea, going to City and now joining United. Uh, there are so many such countless examples. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a Liverpool fan, now being a Man United legend. Which team did you support as a kid? Uh, I, I, I have two. Um, obviously Chelsea. Um, that's always been since I was a kid. But also at the same time, um, I have like Liverpool as well. But uh, Chelsea is... Is, is the main one. I'll, I'll have you know that uh, two of us are Manchester United fans and one of us is an Arsenal fan. So, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh no. Well, I'm the Arsenal fan, but I must tell you that I love the Chelsea, uh, the, the football that they're playing uh, under Tuchel because mm -hmm. it's so different than uh, the team that Chelsea plays. So, why Chelsea? Why particularly Chelsea? Were there any other teams in the running? You chose Chelsea and how has been the development at one of the premier English clubs so far? Um, when I was playing for my local team, uh, I first got scouted by Fulham and I was going to, to, to Fulham when I was like, under nines for a while and then uh, Chelsea came and then as soon as Chelsea came, uh, for a little kid, everyone would fall over on their knees for that. So as soon as Chelsea came, I went straight there um, and I had a trial at Chelsea and it was just yeah, mind blown of how, how good the facilities are and um, how amazing it is. So yeah, straight away I knew Chelsea was for me. Well, I mean, they call you, the media is calling you the wonder kid. 
from the Chelsea Academy, right? Uh, does that put a little bit of pressure on you at some point in time? Or you are just someone who is like, I would say a Phil Foden who uh, has burst into the scene and has no, not shown any fear? Um, first, I don't, really, I don't really look too much on the media side, so can't really say that. But uh, I think uh, there's always, always a bit of pressure when you're playing for Chelsea. And, um, but you just kind of have to like relish on it and just, I'm here and I'm here for a reason sort of. Um, and I've got to show why, why I've got to this level and, um, yeah, pretty much just, 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 just show, show what I can do. And yeah. Basically, how did you fall in love with the game? What made you convince yourself that you would want to become a professional footballer? Um, basically ever since I was uh, a little kid, I just played in, in the garden with, with my brother and my dad. Um, just, yeah, since I was pretty much born, all I can remember is just playing football. Um, and then just pretty much grew from there, just, um, playing more competitively. And it's the only thing I really think about is just football, football, football. So, yeah. What is that one footballing memory that you have that always kind of inspires you? It's there in your mind always. I think a bit, probably the biggest moment for me is when I made my England debut um, and that will pretty much always stay with me um, as I was only like 15 at the time, uh, 15 or 14. So, so yeah, singing the national anthem and, and playing with the best players um, in the country, yeah, that was just, yeah, that's probably the biggest moment for me. And you're a local from Astrid, right? So, I mean, how how... I mean, what is that? Uh, what are the other sports you have played in your career? Like, uh, was it football right from the beginning, or do you have other sports in mind? Uh, I actually really like all sports. I, I, I watch and play loads. So, uh, ever since I was a kid, I always used to play um, cricket and, and rugby as well at school. And I used to play uh, outside uh, um, for a team for cricket as well. Um, I really like golf. Um, and just all sports, pretty much, I play. So I think I think that really helps my my foot, footballing um, footballing as well, as it just gives me um, like a different different um, different ways that I can move my body and different movements which which, which are which have contributed to my football. And you do put a lot of emphasis on on your family, and we have seen that. How critical has been your dad, um, you know, and your family per se? Uh, to your growth as a footballer, how how did they keep you focused? How did they, you know, kind of drive you every day? Uh, because at the end of the day, what we see today is that that drive comes either you know from your family or your near and dear ones or your parents. Uh, otherwise, it becomes very difficult because if they don't believe in you right at the beginning, it becomes very difficult for you as a professional footballer. And on your Instagram also, <clears throat> on your Instagram as well, we see that uh, you you talk, you know, you have talked about your dad, you have talked about your family, right? So how important are they? What is the crucial role that they played? How did they help you grow? Yeah, I think family, my family and friends are pretty much like a massive reason um, for why I'm here. Uh, firstly, yeah, my, my, my dad, mum and brother, um, always just uh, have helped me so much throughout my career. For example, when I was younger, just taking me to training, driving me there, there and back countless times a week. Um, yeah, my, my dad's always just, just, just being there for me. And obviously when, when I have tough times, um, my parents are, are keeping me happy. And when, when I'm on, on high, it's not, not making me, um, not making myself too big for my boots. So, um, just always keeping me grounded, which is, which is really good. Um, so I think, yeah, having a really good family and friends, like, like a core base is, is, is really helpful. And how many times, uh, how many times did your, uh, were you that kid who need, needed to be woken up early in the morning and dragged out of bed for the practice? Um, not quite, not quite, but, um, yeah, getting to training, my, my, my dad didn't like it too much, driving there and back um, pretty much nearly every single day of the week. But 
Um, I did as soon as football training was on. I, I couldn't wait to get down there. Really, um, as 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 that's after it was mainly after school as well. Back when I was a kid, so uh, yeah, I was just waiting for the waiting for the school bell to go to rush me to to rush me to football. Really. Uh, so, uh, what's it like seeing you know players like uh, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham, Reese James? You know they've all come through the academy, the academy that you have also come through, and they've walked the same path that you have. So, does it you know add more pressure? Does it give you motivation? What's it like seeing them achieve so much success? Uh, I think it's very inspirational how 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 well they've done, um, and it motivates all like the academy players um, to try and do do the same that they've done um, as they were in the same position as, uh, as me and, and my teammates. So I think that gives, gives us like um, the belief that why can't it be us? Um, and, and why can't, why can't we do what they're doing? So that, that pushes us and uh, motivates us to, to train and, and get to their level. Chelsea, the current team, who do you idealize? Um, that's a good question. My my favorite players are Pulisic and Mount, and then Kante as well. Those three are like my 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 favorite three. Um, but at the moment, it'd probably be Mason Mount. It's just what's what's he uh, what's he done for Chelsea in England, and just he was pretty much in the exact same position as me. So just just seeing him there, really, yeah. The it, Mason Mount inspires you to get out of bed every morning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of course, that you know uh, has has Chelsea's playing style changed? With I mean, you have trained with the team a couple of times. The the first team, uh, Tuchel, his playing style. How do you like it? Uh, you might have experienced a little bit of Frank Lampard as well, a club legend, right? But Tuchel comes into the club, wins you a Champions League. Uh, which where where do you see yourself? Which style? Um, I can't really say too much on that because um, both both uh, Frank and and Tuchel have both done great jobs so far when when they were at Chelsea. So um, I think um, Tuchel's playing style is clearly like the he's 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 kept the ball more. He's like dominated games now. Um, so for a, for a creative player that likes being on the ball. Um, it's it's good for me, um, and the play style is clearly working. Tuchel is known as one of the most tactical, intensive coaches. Like every player has a position. He makes you play with curved pitches, small balls. So, how interested are uh, how big of a student are you in the tactical sense of the game, like positions on the pitch, uh, where you receive the ball in step, out step? How big of a student are you in that regard of the game? Uh, yeah, since over the past uh, past years, it's just the tactical side of the game has just become so much more important. Um, so having Thomas Tuchel here at Chelsea is just uh, as one of the best is 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 amazing. And uh, yeah, just even the little things now in football are just are so important. So just having something someone like that um, as the first team coach is 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 uh, yeah, it's just amazing. And if he asked you to play as the false nine, would you do that? Yeah, I played I played striker a couple of times um, last season. So, I mean, if Thomas Tuchel told me, then I'm on it. Um, which coach had the best, which is the best coaching advice you have ever received in your life? That one advice. One advice. Um, just, just play with no fear. Just... Yeah, just when when you're out on the pitch, just forget. Don't have it, put any pressure on yourself. Just play with no fear, and just play with a smile. Really, um, it's pretty quite simple, but it's it's really effective, and it's um, it's helped me a lot by by. Who was that? And uh, who was that? Uh, from very very young age, um, just all like, it's all like the 
from when I was like under 10s, under 11, like those, my first couple coaches and my dad just, just saying when I was younger, just to keep that throughout, throughout my career. Um, yeah, just a play of no fear. Right. So as you said, the competition is so fierce and everyone is uh, trying for that one position in that Chelsea first team. So when, as you said, the football in you started since it's in your veins, it started playing since birth. So when did you think, was there any particular moment that you felt, ki, yes, I belong here. I can take it up professionally and I'll be good at it. Was there any particular moment? Um, I guess when I signed my pro contract, um, that was pretty much when, like, uh, uh, yeah, the, the most, mo- the biggest moment. But again, um, it's a, it's a long journey, and this is just the start, really. Um, as ever since I was, a, yeah, as a young kid, I've just wanted to play professionally and wanted to wanted to be the best. So this is just over, just one step on the way. Yeah. So uh, uh, as you've also mentioned, what has also mentioned that there is a lot of intense competition. So what do you do to make sure that you're, you know, ahead of the pack? And, uh, you know, what edge do you think that you bring to the table? Um, I think now as, as, you, as I'm getting older, um, diet has come, has become a, um, a big part of, um, of it and, and, uh, like keep keeping in shape. Um, so, so especially that, and then also the technical side, always like trying to improve right foot, left foot, um, passing, shooting, just always wanting to improve that, um, and be, and be the best really. So, um, just constantly trying to, to improve technical side. And then also on the, on the, uh, on, on the physical side as well, we, um, getting stronger uh, and having a good diet. seen players around you go out on loan come back and you know get some get into the first team some don't so what do you think of that do you think that that is an option you'll be exploring this season or next or anytime soon um i think this 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 season um i'm gonna uh hopefully try and maybe get a game in the first team and and play in the under 23s this year but uh potentially um the year after um, you never know. Could, I could go on, out on loan, as you've seen, like Mason Mount go to Vitesse and Derby, and then go go into the first team, same like Tammy and Fakaya and those boys. So clearly, it has it has worked, and um, it has been successful. So I guess we'll just wait and see. My my my. Okay, I, I'll ask you the uh, uh, short and sweet questions. Uh, when do we see you in the Premier League? Oof. Hopefully as soon as possible. Hopefully as soon as possible. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep working, and then and then my chance will come. Hopefully. What's the target for 2021 and 2022 for Joey? Oh, um, the tar- the target is is to hopefully play in the first team, um, to, to score and assist as many as possible in the 23s, and then also um, at the end of the season in May. Um, there's the under nine or June the uh, under nineteen Euros. So hopefully, um, my my aim is to get selected for that. Um, I guess uh, that was it, uh, Joe. Lovely interview. Uh, that was Joe Egg and uh, the wonder kid that I believe uh, and we all believe that Chelsea and England has been waiting for a long time. Kind of flows with the player generation that England has right now. And maybe the next big thing that you would see on uh, the pitch uh, for Chelsea uh, this season or the next season. Thank you very much, Joe, for talking to Foot the Ball. Uh, And it has been a great interview. And we wish you all the very best in these seasons to come. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.